What's up guys, we're back. Today we're gonna to talk about fight, flight, or freeze. What is it, um, how you can train it, how you can overcome it, all right? So, I can tell you this. I know a bunch of dudes, I know a bunch of pretty tough dudes, and if anybody tells you that they've never been scared, or never froze up, or ever ran away from something, they're a fucking liar. I can also tell you this that while I have done all those things in different aspects, I have never been scared in a firefight. Never. I don't know why. Um, I can, I can kind of run through things and look at it and I can, I can tell you the cool guy answer was like, I love those dudes more than I love myself. And I didn't care if I died, and, which is true and complete bullshit. Um, I don't want to die, <laughs> obviously, right? And uh, I can tell you that every time I've been deployed, every firefight that I've been in, um, all the stuff, I, I had one continuous thought through my head, and that was like, I can't die on foreign soil. For whatever reason, I don't think the powers that be, whoever that is, would let me die on foreign soil. So far... It's rain true. Sounds stupid. Probably is pretty stupid. But again, so far it's rain true. So, fight, flight, or freeze, what is it? It is basically our lizard brain from a long time ago. Evolution brought us up to here. It is preserving life. Um, happens all the time in nature. You're driving down the road and a deer jumps out and just stares at you all stupid like... It's one of those things that kids do. You know, they pull the covers up over the head. If they can't see me, you know, if I can't see them, they can't see me. Um, also, you know, squirrels, they run away from you. But if you back a squirrel up in the corner, that little son of a bitch is going to bite your ass. Guaranteed, right? The human body, evolution, the human body is all about self-preservation. Um, for example, if you ever get hypothermia, frostbite, anything like that, What's the first thing, or not the first thing, but what's one of the things that happens? The human body takes the blood from the extremities and brings it up to the core, right? Why is that? Because you don't need hands and feet to live. Simple answer. Your brain knows that, your body knows that, and it doesn't care. It's going to be like, hey, I'll sacrifice a hand, I'll sacrifice a foot, as long as I can save the brain, the heart, and the lungs. Um, another thing, over-evolutionary... Have you ever been scared um, of a, an actual th threat or a perceived threat? What do you do? Right? You do that. The flinch startle response. If you want to learn literally all about that, Tony Blower is the guy to go to. He developed the spear system. Um, basically, you know, you take the flinch startle response and you weaponize it. Um, but what, what do you do? If you go around a corner and your wife... Your first sergeant, if you're watching, remember what happened? Um, they jump out there, uh, boom, right? What are you gonna do? You're gonna flinch, and what are you doing right here? You're saving this, because this is very important. This is unbelievably important to your body, and it knows it. So you go like this, and you're scared, and you're protecting the most valuable part. Um, some people, um, when you train through it and when you get indoctrinated to what you do, um, as my, my first sergeant found out at one point in time, um, you can jump out and scare somebody. And the first thing they do, instead of going like this, they go like that, right? You know, I was walking in and we had a two hour late start. Nobody called me for some reason. And I'm walking in with my uniform over my shoulder, do, 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 do. Power was out. First sergeant jumps out at me. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Um, I, he, I thought, saw him on the ground, scared as shit because I was a, I was a staff sergeant in E6 at the time. I just punched my first sergeant in the face. My bad. But what happened? What happened was over the course of time, my body had it, uh, it been indoctrinated to stress. It's stress inoculated, stress inoculation. And my body's response at that point in time and that mindset was not to be scared, not to flinch, but to react. Right? So, with all that being said, let's go ahead, let's dig, dig a little deeper, and let's see exactly what the fight, flight, or freeze response actually is, and what it does to the human body. 
Okay, let's start with flight. What is flight? Basically, at its bare bones, it's running away. Why do we do that? Well, because back in the day, saber-toothed tigers were scary as shit. And when they came up on you and they wanted to eat you, what did the cavemen do? They ran away. The dudes who didn't run away didn't live very long. Therefore, the evolutionary chain cut those guys out because the tigers ate them. And here we are, the dudes that ran away. Hmm. But let's put it in practical terms. You ever been walking down a, a street or you're walking to your car and it's dark and then, I don't know, maybe you're in a shady part of town or not the best part of town. And you get like that pit in your stomach and you just kind of feel like, you know, somebody's watching me, something's going on. That's your gut and your instincts, instincts telling you, hey, something ain't right. And through every course I've ever been in, they always say one thing, always listen to your gut. Your gut is never wrong. Um, and we'll get into more exactly what, what that is, what those butterflies are in here in a minute. Um, but basically it's, you know, a perceived or actual threat and you're going to run away for it for the preservation of life. Maybe you see something and you're like, hey, I can't fight that. Um, if I try, I'm going to get myself hurt or killed or get my family or friends hurt or killed. So what's the best course of action right now? The best course of action is to run. And you know what? There's no shame in that game. You know, you live to fight another day, but sometimes you have to run. Like, let's, let's take Iceland right now, right? There's this volcano erupting and there's liquid hot magna flying, flowing down. You going to fight it? Fuck no, you're going to run, right? Why? Because that shit's going to kill you. Pretty plain and simple, right? Um, where, we, where we can get into this and where we can train this a little bit more is you do that to real or perceived threats. For example, um, let's, ghosts, right? Some people believe in them, some people don't. But if you go to certain places and somebody tells you it's haunted, Every single noise in that place after dark, you're you're going to be scared. You're going to be on edge. You're going to be looking around, right? And then something happens, and you're going to get really scared, and you're going to run away. It's a perceived threat. It's something that your mind is making up. But even though your mind is making up, you think it's real. And to preserve human life, you're going to run. Okay? Um, and like I said before, sometimes running is the right course of action. Every situation is completely different from the next. And sometimes you have to run away to, in order to save yourself, to save someone else, um, to preserve human life, who, whoever's human life that may be. Okay, let's talk about freeze. Um, what happens? A situation occurs and you basically freeze up, right? It, it's exactly what it's saying. You cannot make a judgment call. You cannot make a decision. You can't run. You can't do anything. You just freeze, right? Um... Unfortunately, we see this a lot um, in active shooter situations. The shooter will come in, um, or active killer situations, whatever you want to call it. The shooter will come in, um, they'll start shooting people, people start running, and other people will just freeze and hide. And the shooter inevitably executes them. Now, why do we do this? Again, it's preservation of life. Back to the deer. You know, you're driving the deer looks at you at your car and just stares at you because somewhere somehow the deer and us we think that if i don't move they won't see me they'll move on right digging a little bit deeper in that is it's usually because there's so much stress occurring whatever that stress may be there's so much occurring your brain cannot process that because you have not trained that right um, you see it in traffic accidents. You roll up on a traffic accident, you know, there's cars everywhere, two people are dead, whatever. Somebody's on the phone with 911, and 911 is asking them, you know, what's your location? Do we need to send an ambulance? Blah, 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 blah. And the person's just sitting there. I don't know where we're at. I don't, oh my God, oh my God, you gotta help, help, help. But they don't know how to give out the right information. Because in their, they've never been inoculated to that type of stress, right? Um, you can see it on the battlefield when a firefight, firefight's going on and you have a, a lower enlisted or like a private on the radio, they're not giving out the right information to get help to come to you. You also see that um, when you have like a rookie cop. A rookie cop, you go on scene, 
whatever that scene may be. Maybe it's, it's car wreck. There's a seven car pile up. There's, you know, people flying everywhere. That rookie cop just grabs the radio, doesn't know what to say, right? Is it their fault? Not necessarily. They've never been trained to that. They've never seen that before because they've never seen that before. They don't know what to do. Um, but you get that cop that's been on the force for 5, 10, 15 years. They roll up on the scene. The first thing they do is they grab their mic and they call out everything they need. They call out how many cars, how many tow trucks, how many ambulances, you know. They call out everything they need. Um, and why is that? Just because they've seen it, they've trained it, they know what to do. Um, in combat, there was one time where our platoon was, um, we were staying in an old school building and basically that was our sector, just our platoon. And then we had, I think it was a squad, maybe a whole platoon of MPs for some unknown reason. They were hanging out with us and, um, we got attacked right before dawn uh, when the French and Indians attack, if you know what I mean. And what happened was they hit us with like, I think it was seven RPGs all at the same time and our school was pretty little. And um, at the time, this was in 03, 03, they, the supplies were very limited so we didn't have like the sandbag deflate on the roof or anything. So it was, it was a very chaotic. My point being is when all this went down and people were returning fire and doing this and doing that, there was people that were hiding under tables. There was people that were diving under Humvees because because they were scared, because they didn't know what to do. And that's what your body's gonna do if you've never been in that situation or never stress inoculated to anything like that. Um, BJJ, you get into a fight, all of a sudden dude starts choking you. You don't know what to do, What you freak out. And you just start, you know, clawing. You freak out because you don't know what to do. And how do we get by that? It's very easy. You just train. You look at every situation possible. You try to train every situation possible. Um, you obviously can't train every situation, but you can train all the major situations and play those mental movies in your head like we talked about. And you can train your mind. And if you train your mind enough, your body will react. Okay, let's talk about fight. Fight is something that is completely unnatural. The reason why is because it does not preserve life. It is the last choice in your brain's processes to do. You can look at nature. What happens in nature, you know? It, the first thing the animal might do is freeze, then they might run. The last thing the animal is going to do is want to fight you. Um, they're going to want to get away from you. You know, the old adage of they're more scared of you than you are of them. It, it, it kind of holds true. The last thing they're going to want to do is fight you. Um, and that same thing, when is it natural? Well, have you ever got between a bear and a cub? Like, that's pretty natural. Any motherly instinct that will take over, take precedence over anything else. Um, they're trying to preserve the life of their child and they will fight and die to do that. Um, we have all heard the stories of the car wreck, the kid stuck underneath the car, the mom gets out and what does she do? She lifts the car up, right? That is the fight response to that situation. Um, that woman obviously probably had never even lifted weights in her entire life, and yet she was able to deadlift that car up and get that kid out. Why? We'll go over that in a minute, and we'll, we'll tell you what the body does. But in that situation, it's completely natural because they're trying to save and they're trying to preserve the human life of their child. Um, another time it's, it's very natural is on the battlefield. What happens? You hear it and see it, and dudes or missing limbs and have medals of honor to prove it. They will put their lives ahead of their soldiers' lives or their brothers' lives or anything like that. They will run into gunfire, they will jump on the grenade, they will do anything possible to preserve the life of their brothers, okay? Brothers or sisters. Um, that is something that is not really inherent to a human being but through training, through camaraderie, that can all be trained. 
you can train to do that. And you're not just trained to jump on a grenade, but you're trained to react. And you know that you have to react to this situation and it's gonna save everybody else. And in doing that, it may take your own life. Um, and it, it's, it's hard to get, to wrap your head around that. Like, why would this dude die, you know, for a government entity going to combat? Well, he's not dying for that. He's dying for his brothers. He's dying for the dudes to the left and right of him, to the dudes that are standing behind him, to the dudes that are standing in front of him, because all those dudes mean more to him than anything else. And if you've ever been in combat, you completely understand that. And, you know, I, I always say there's nothing in the civilian sector that's equal to the military sector. Nothing. In the military, you know at three o'clock in the morning, if you have an issue, if you have a problem, there's 30 dudes you can call. And every single one of those dudes are gonna wake up, they're gonna hear you, they're gonna be like, hold on dude, I gotta grab my shoes. And then they're gonna drive and they're gonna help you out in whatever situation that is. It doesn't matter. If you got into a fight, if you went to jail, if you're stuck, if like me, I was stranded out in the middle of the mountains, you know, like they're gonna help you. And there's a, just people in the civilian world just don't get that. And they're not gonna help you because they're gonna get in trouble or anything. No, they're gonna do it out of love. And you know, I know it's, you know, for kids and stuff to, to tell one dude that you love another dude, people are like, that's gay. No, it's not. It's not because there's a lot of dudes that I served with um, in, in military and contracting and in the police world. I love those dudes and I would do anything for them. And when I say anything, that, that's, pretty damn close I mean damn near anything so the fight comes in you know is like I said it's, it's an unnatural human response um, but you can train through that you can train it may be through your upbringing through your childhood um, that that was how your parents taught you how to respond to something and that is now ingrained in your brain or it could be through something else um for I, you know, I went to college but i was never in a fraternity um from what i understand you know they're a pretty close brother right and they you know if you see your friend getting picked on or getting bullied what are you gonna do well, you're probably gonna fight you know it's 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 something that you can train through that you can train to do and it's something that if and when necessary you have to do it okay now, let's get into the kind of meat and potatoes of this. What happens to the human body, right? So, you're, you, you got your kid, you're walking down that alley, sketchy neighborhood, whatever, you're driving through it, you kind of start feeling that pit and those butterflies in your stomach, right? Well, what is it? It's a, it's a threat, perceived or otherwise, by the brain, right? when the brain in the body says, oh shit, something's gonna happen, and your lizard brain kicks in, right? That the part of your brain that, that has been developed over the evolutionary period kicks in. Um, one of the first things it does is it dumps adrenaline and cortisol, right? Um, everybody's heard of adrenaline, right? That's what, that's what makes you strong, fast, and you can fight, right? <clears throat> Another thing that happens is your blood pressure goes up, okay? Why is that? Why does it start going up? Because you need blood and you need oxygen to your muscles in, it, in order to fight or run, right? Um, your body starts converting um, glycogen to glucose so that you can have energy. Um, if you can have energy, either, again, fight or run. You need energy for both. And if you've ever seen somebody scared out of their mind, look at a rabbit, right? You take a rabbit and you're like, oh my God, that dog can outrun that rabbit any day of life. But when that rabbit's scared and that rabbit's running for its life, it can outrun that dog pretty easily, right? Um, what else happens? Uh, your breathing. Your breathing starts increasing. You start breathing faster, um, again, to get more oxygen in. Your muscles, right? Because of the blood pressure and breathing, your mu the, the blood flows through your muscles and your muscles start to tense up. Now, I'm not talking like you're flexing, but they tense up in order to prepare for battle, all right? Your digestion slows to almost a halt, okay? And that's where the butterfly effect comes from. Your body does this subconsciously, you don't know what's happening, but all of a sudden the 
blood flow really kind of stops going to the digestive area and tell your body says, hey, we don't need to poop or pee right now. We just need to chill out because we've got some other shit going on. And that right there causes your stomach to kind of turn a little bit and you get those butterflies in your stomach. You get that gut feeling, right? What else happens? Your pupils, they dilate, right? Um, your vision narrows and we get what we like to call tunnel vision. Why is that? Because your body wants to focus on the threat. If this is the threat, all this stuff and all this stuff, that shit doesn't matter right now. This is what matters and this is what we're gonna deal with. Um, if you've ever watched um, dudes that shoot and they come back and they do this, okay, that's to break out of your tunnel vision. That's what it was originated for. It's gotten retarded right now, but it's to break out of the tunnel vision so you, you can tell your mind, hey, we're done with that. We need to start looking around to see what else is going on, all right? Um, what, el what else happens? You get what we commonly refer to as auditory exclusion or hearing loss. Um, if you've ever talked to a dude in combat, they, they'll tell you like, I didn't really hear much. You know, I, I was engaging the enemy. I was doing this, I was doing that, but I don't really hear or remember, you know, what happened over there. And if you got, you know, big guns going off, explosions going off, but your mind is so focused on going in that house or whatever, that's what happens. Your body automatically does it. It says, Hey, you know what? We don't need these things right now. We need to focus on this and we need to handle this first. And that's what happens. Um, one of the last things your body does is you start sweating. Um, if you don't know, the reason why you do sweat is to keep your body cool, right? You sweat, the air blows on it, it keeps your body cool. You don't want to overheat. Again, your body auto always auto regulates. So that's what happens inside your body without you even knowing it subconsciously happens because of a threat perceived or otherwise. Now, remember, your body does all this to help you, to preserve your life. And you might be thinking, well, what if I'm in that car wreck? Um, I'm, whatever, fell off a bridge, I'm going in the water, I'm trapped in my car, and all of a sudden I freeze. Well, isn't that my body's not helping me? No, in that situation, it's not. But in that situation, what, you, what else you have is you have an overwhelming preservation of your own life, not only subconsciously, but consciously, right? You can see that your car is in the water. You can see the water level rising, and you think, shit, I got to get out. Now, if you've trained this, you know you can roll down your windows. You can create equal water pressure. You can open your doors. You can swim out. If you've trained that, if you haven't, what do you do? You try to push on the door. Try pushing push on a car door against a bunch of water, it ain't gonna happen very well. So what else you do? You're gonna try to break out the window. Now, with all your adrenaline dump and everything like that, it's very possible you might be able to break out the window. Either you kick it, punch it, whatever, right? In that situation, again, your body's helping you. It's giving you all the adrenaline, all the energy, everything you need to hit that window, to break it out, to climb your ass out of the car and to swim away, right? Now, like I've been talking, you can train all of this, okay? You can train this to be a light switch, right? Um, if you look at like a, a UFC fighter, right? Those dudes are calm, cool, and collective, usually, in the back room. And then maybe once that cage locks or once, you know, Bruce Buffer calls their name, it flips a switch and now they're in fight mode, right? Um, for me, when I was in the military on my last deployment, in my Humvee, we played a certain song every time we rolled out the gate. Um, and every time we rolled out the gate, that was my light switch. You know, we played that song and my light and my, everything just went, it just clicked. Hey, it's go time. It's time to work. It's not time to worry about anything else. No bills, no wife, no kids, no nothing. Like all that stuff is over there. Right now, it's time to work. And you can train through that. Um, like I said, any stress inoculation training, right? Whether it's fighting, grappling, um, you know, shooting's a big thing. You can do a lot of stress training with shooting. Um, anything that you do that's gonna cause your heart rate to go up, cause you to sweat, cause you to think and make decisions, and you might screw up those decisions, but that's okay, because this is training, and training is where you screw things up. It's okay to mess up in training. It's not okay to mess up in real life, because that's gonna cost people's lives. In training, mess up. 
okay? Because that's where you're going to learn. If you mess up something in training and somebody's there, a good coach is there to say, hey, you messed this up, what should you have done? And you can walk through that process and the next time you can do it better. And you can do it better and better and better and better. And if you've ever been wrestling or boxing or in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or anything like that, you know that the first while you're going to get your ass kicked. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> but through training, through coaching, through that process of stress inoculation, you can learn and you can be better. Um, one quote that I will always remember, and I, I looked it up, and I honestly, I can't tell you who said this, but it's a quote that says, for those that I love, I will do great and terrible things. I want you to think about that. I want you to think, go through all these situations in your head, play those mental movies. If somebody breaks into your house at noon on a Saturday, what are you going to do? Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be prepared? Are you going to know what to do? Have you even thought about it? At the end of the day, that's what you got to ask yourself. You got to ask these hard truths. If somebody breaks into my house and has a gun, has a knife, or simply has bare hands and wants to fight, are you going to be able to get through it? So at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, are you an asset or are you a liability?